is this. Her journey's just begun. Don't think of her as gone away. Her journey's just begun. Life holds so many facets. This earth is only one. Just think of her as resting from the sorrows and the tears in a place of warmth and comfort where there are no days or years. And oh, how she'd tell us if she could today how nothing but our sadness can really pass away. And think of her as living in heaven and in the hearts she touched. For nothing loved is ever lost. And she was loved so much. And you pray with me. Father, we, we praise you and thank you for all of who you are. And it's because of who you are we, we need you. We need you always. And that's especially apparent when our lives, as we know them, look different. And they certainly look different today as we remember and celebrate the life of our loved one. As the one who said, I, the Lord, do not change. And the same yesterday, today, and forever, we are grateful that you clothe our hearts with your consistent and constant love and care. Heal our hearts, Lord, with the presence of your Holy Spirit and the peace that you bring beyond our comprehension. We, we trust you and your healing presence in the now, throughout this service, our time together, and, and in the days ahead. It's in the name of Christ we pray. Amen. 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 As Brother Josh said, that it's kind of a bittersweet time in the uh -oh. just like this. And, and the fam oh, no, it's cool. and the family wanted to reflect that that um, in the music that this is also a celebration because mm -hmm. we're celebrating her home going, aren't we? Yes. Amen. So our first song is number three fourteen, and I'd invite you to, to join me in singing this. Reminds us of how important our brothers and sisters in Christ are at a time like this. We're all family. Amen. Amen. The family of God. Let's sing that together. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this song for a part of the family, the family of God. You will notice we say, brother, sister, round here, it's because we're a family and these folks are so one has a heartache, we all share the tears and rejoice in each victory. This family so dear. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. Join in as we travel this song for a part of the family the family of God from the door of an orphanage to the house of the king no longer an outcast a new song I sing from rags to riches from weak to the strong, I'm not worthy to be here, but praise God I belong. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood, joined heirs with Jesus as we travel. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. 
Wanda Ruth Mooney passed away at her home in Holmanville on Friday, October 21st, 2022, at the age of 91 years. Lived a long life, didn't she? Wanda was the daughter of David Chance Weeks and Eva Jane Simpkin Weeks, the fifth, fifth of 10 children. She was born on June 20th, 1931 in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, and was brought up all over the state in various parts of Missouri and Arkansas before the family settled in Armona, California in 1947. Wanda was married to Elgin D. Mooney of Laton, California in December 20th, 1950, and they lived in San Joaquin Valley of California for more than 20 years before moving to Holdenville, their home since 1971. Wanda was an accomplished seamstress and worked for a while at Seam Group in Holdenville. She was also a quilter. In fact, I saw a lot of her work. She, she was a very artistic quilter, very good quilter, and operated Mooney's Quilting along with her husband while assisting in the Kermagee service station he owned and operated for many years on North Hinckley in Holdenville. They attended First Church of God in Holdenville. Wanda was a true homemaker and her family was the light of her life. Amen. She, she is preceded in death by her parents, David and Eva Weeks. Her husband of 60 years, Elgin D. Mooney, five brothers, Alvin Weeks, Kenneth Weeks, Jim Weeks, William Weeks, and David Weeks. Three sisters, Sylvia Weeks, Chin, Faye Weeks Williamson, and Joanne Weeks Brown. Two half-sisters, Ola May, Holly, and Alta Hall and her son-in-law, Henry Clark. She is survived uh, by her son and daughter-in-law, Mark and Lynn Mooney of Tulsa, two daughters, Patsy Mooney and Linda Clark, both of Holdenville, three grandchildren, Richard Mooney, Carrie Clark, and David Clark, one sister, Evelyn Weeks Cummins of Kauai, Hawaii. Numerous nieces and nephews, great nieces and great nephews, other family members, and many, many friends. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thought I could turn that on. That's a good reminder if your phone's on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's turn together to number 728. Number 728. I said this is, we're celebrating the homecoming. And the Bible says that those of us that believe will one day rise and meet them together with them in the air. Amen? And that's what this song is about. Some sweet day. Let's sing it together. Some glad morning when this life is over. Hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. 
and then this time, uh, as we were kind of going through the, the week and, and corresponding back and forth about some of the things that we'd like to incorporate into this service, uh, the family had just expressed that they wanted to open up a, a, a moment where maybe you'd like to say something about Wanda, maybe some precious memories of things that maybe struck you and, and have stuck with you. Uh, by all means, you're, you're more than welcome to, to do that now. Wanda's memories of Wanda was her feisty spirit, her sense of humor, and oh my goodness, her generosity. She, um, when we were at a WCG meeting, she, we were talking about uh, sponsoring this village that had no running water, and they had the decision to make on chickens, goats, and, and different things like that. And I said, I'd like to have a goat. <laughs> and there was like, well, we need the chickens. And Wanda said, you know, goats drink a lot of water. And then she proceeded to tell me this long standing story, a joke about a goat and stuff. And I started laughing so hard. <laughs> and the show started laughing and it kind of spread a little bit. Everybody started laughing and stuff. And Wanda's like, okay, mother. <laughs> and it just, Wanda kept trying to bring it back to the mm -hmm. chicken and what we needed to do. And uh, Wanda once again starts the story over again. And <laughs> By then I was laughing, everybody was kind of laughing. And Linda throws her hands up and she goes, you know, never mind. She said, when mama's on a row, there is no stopping her. <laughs> and, you know, that's something I remember about her. And um, Christmas, we were doing a hand lotion for our senior citizens and nursing homes and people. And so we decided to make this hand lotion. And every time anybody got near the mixer to mix this hand lotion up, she would start telling them a joke. <laughs> and, uh, I was standing there and I was listening to her and I accidentally turned the blender on high and it just went everywhere <laughs> and we just had such a blast because there was lotion on the counters and on us and it was just so much fun and that's so special about Wanda was her amazing sense of humor but also uh, she had this love for life she was just spicy no matter where she was at she would make you laugh or just say something that was when you were being serious to get you to laugh or to smile. And her generosity was amazing. Um, she did a beautiful job with her quilts, outstanding quilts. And uh, we had Christmas in July one year, and my sister had been very sick, and uh, there's this quilt, it was a lap quilt, and it had an angel on it with a saying in the Bible verse, the scripture. And I said, Wanda, I wanna buy that quilt for you after the show and stuff and she's like no that's already been bought and uh, I was like oh man and she said but it's okay and so after we started cleaning up she came up to me and handed me the quilt mm -hmm. and she said I want you to have this for your sister wow and such an amazing woman uh, Linda and you know they have been such a big part of my family for a very long time and uh she was very proud of her grandkids. And she was very, when David sang, she just loved listening to him sing. And she was a great lady, and I will miss our community because she was such a great person and a great friend. I admired Wanda for just keeping on, even though she didn't feel well. Mm -hmm. And she had to have help a lot, and she kept going and going and going. and. She was a good part of our class for many years. And like uh, was said, she had a good sense of humor. And that kept us all happy and content, too. Well, Pastor, I'd like to say, um, when I first came here, I came here in 2006, and uh, she was very accommodating. She was very uh, welcoming. Um, and then as time went on, things happened and stuff, and she started losing her sight. What I noticed most, she started losing her sight. And I would come to the back over here, and she would say, uh, who is it, if you'd put out your hand to her? And I would say, "It." I got ready to say it. And she'd say, oh, it's Ann, and she'd shake my hand. So... Uh, she was just really good about uh, welcoming people, letting people know they were loved, and so we appreciate her very much. We're going to miss her a lot.
temperature at the telephone. Thank you, my dad. Funeral, birth, and her sisters. Had an altar in this heart. Mm -hmm. Bless him, Lord. life we we have some victories and some losses don't we but the ultimate victory is in Jesus amen amen and that's why we're going to sing this next song number 595 victory in Jesus <laughs> I 
heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story, and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all his love is to him. He plunged me to victory. Enjoying that fullness right now. Ecclesiastes 12, verses 1 through 8, is a scripture that I chose for, for today, which shares these words. Remember also your Creator in the days of your youth, before the evil days come and the years draw near, of which you will say, I have no pleasure in them. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened, and the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house tremble, and the strong men are bent, and the grinders cease because they are few, and those who look through the windows are dim, and the doors on the street are shut. When the sound of the grinding is low, and one rises up at the sound of a bird, and all the daughters of song are brought low. They are afraid also of what is high, and terrors are in the way. The almond tree blossoms, the grasshopper drags itself along, and desire fails, because man is going to his eternal home. Mm -hmm. And the mourners go out in the streets before the silver cord is snapped, or the golden bowl is broken, or the pitcher is shattered at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern. And the dust returns to the earth as it was. Mm -hmm. And the spirit returns to God who gave it. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. All is vanity. Mm -hmm. Before the appointed time, and according to the Lord's leading, that he came for Wanda. Wanda was a, was a very special parishioner, a sister in Christ. In the short amount of time that I, I had to be able to, to gather bits and pieces of information from the family, and then the time that I was with her, uh, and then some of the things you shared, you know, words like, if you needed her, she was there. Loved being with people. Humble, faithful, committed, joyful, loving, and then some, uh, and some more I'm sure you can think of. For the privileged amount of time that I had with Wanda, one fond memory I have of her on Sunday or Wednesday evenings back in the, in the foyer, around a table we'd have Bible study, but before that we'd worship, and, and, and it never ceased to, to not happen. She'd have her eyes closed and her, her hands raised, mm -hmm. just, just praising the Lord or clapping even with joy. Uh, she really got excited to worship. She loved coming to church when she was able. She, she carried a joy with her where she could joke, laugh, and, and had me laughing once all the while in the hospital bed. You know, I'm supposed to make her feel good, and she, she's having me feel good because of all the laughter she's got. And she, she, could, she could laugh and smile even while being on a walker, even while being strapped to an oxygen bottle, and all of this while dealing with a physical ailment of not being able to see due to severe macular degeneration. I'm 39 years old, I've been a pastor for 15, and at least uh, for those that, I, that have lived a long time, and I've gotten the privilege and the honor of getting to know them, and they have the mental faculties towards the, the time in which the Lord calls them, and I've gotten pretty close to them, 
there is something in common for them all, Wanda included, and, and that's this, friends. They know how to live, mm -hmm. and they know how to leave. Amen. They know how to live, and they know how to leave. And, the, and these tie in with one another. They know how to live. And beyond just dealing with what life throws at you, I can't help but notice, like in Wanda's instance, instances, those, those physical ailments weren't going to rob her of her joy. And they weren't going to rob her of, of, of living from each day, loving God and loving others. And, and they know how to leave. That, that as the time approaches and they're privileged to, to understand that, and the body's failing, their priorities or what's important look so different from the rest of the world. In conversation with Wanda, she once shared, I've had my fun. I'm ready to go be with Jesus. I just want my family to know that I love them. And what takes center stage isn't to escape the physical elements and the problems so that life in this world can continue, nor to get the latest and greatest materials or whatnot that this world has to offer, or to try to accomplish some certain task, trying to dig in heel and toe to, to just keep hanging on to this world. But, but life with Christ despite those things, mm -hmm. loving God, loving others, yes. and communicating that the best you can before the time comes, and living freely in his love, and, and, and giving that away, that, that seems to be priority. Ecclesiastes 3.11 shares that God's placed eternity upon man's heart, which means there's a drawing of our being towards something beyond this world has to offer, a longing for something beyond the rudimentary world that says, you know, you, you eat, you sleep, you work, you retire, and, and then you die. And, and the older the Lord permits us to get, man, maybe I'm off on this one, but the more, the more redundant the ways of the world seem in all its turmoil and decay, and, and the more true it seems that there's got to be more than this. And Romans 8, 20 verses, 8 verses 20 through 23 shares, For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, and hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption, and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we eagerly as we wait eagerly for adoptions of son, sons and daughters, the redemption of our bodies. Mm -hmm. Freedom of the glory of the children of God. Freedom, freedom starts to look a lot different the longer we live, I think. The, the, this world begins looking less attractive. It loses its luster as it continues its hustle and bustle. Our, our grip loosens as we, as we begin to wrestle with what's, what's my purpose? What's my purpose? Life looks less like doing whatever we want, less like a, a heart tuned into to, to getting whatever we can from this world, and, and all of our hot pursuits. The, the Ecclesiastes 12 passage that, that I read communicates this. Evil days come, and the years draw near of which you will say, I have no pleasure in them. Mm -hmm. Our physical bodies even help with this. As, as, as we get older, we can't see as good as we used to. We can't hear as good as we used to. The sounds, including that of workers, is low, uh, and, and things don't look the same. People we knew, including children, they've grown up, they've moved on, some have even went on for to, to an eternity, and like a grasshopper that's lost its desire to hop in great strides anymore, so it becomes with you and I. And all of what we've gained while here on earth, all of our silver and golden possessions, they are meaningless. Freedom and, 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 and what's important in that freedom looks different in the light of eternity. Yeah. The grip is loosened and the focus changes, friends, from, from what keeps this life afloat that is fading to what really matters and, and is important and is embraced, such as love and compassion and care and mercy and grace and forgiveness and reconciliation. 
the splendor and glory of what heaven looks like is, is pursued here on earth as we love God and love others. There's a longing for no more tears and no more pain and Amen. no more suffering Amen. and no more heartache. Freedom looks different. And there's no doubt in my mind that Wanda knew this. That's right. From the way that she lived. Uh, for the time I knew her anyway, freedom looked different. To not be bound by this world, but running freely in Christ. And, and the self-reflective question that I kept coming back while I, was, too, while I was preparing for this, and the freedom that, that, that she seemed to display in Jesus that was, that was opposite of what the world says is freedom, is this. Am I ready to leave? Am I ready to leave? Are you? Are we ready to leave? Now, I, I know it's God who appoints our times, and, and many do not get to ponder that question, but I sense this ties in with really living. You know? If, if freedom begins to look like eternity, loving God and loving others, is, is, is my life leaning towards him in that? Am I ready to leave? This question isn't, isn't to cause fear, but to encourage us to live more tuned and, and aligned in our lives with what our hearts long for, with where we're heading, uh, what we were made for, eternity and he who is love. And that's entirely good news. You know, we don't have to live from day to day aimless or feel dragged down and bound by this world and all its disappointments, but we can really live. Yeah, we can prepare to leave. Truly being free. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, knew this, and he, he reflected it. One time we find an interesting passage in Luke 9, 51, which records, when, when the days drew near for him to be taken up, Jesus, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. He knew his time was coming. And it, was, it isn't that Jesus didn't live like he was ready to leave before. But, but as the time came close to go to the cross, to be our Passover lamb, to be that, that ransom for many, taking on the sins of the world upon his shoulders, as that time drew closer and closer, and he knew it, what we don't find him doing is, is holding on to this world with a tight grip. We don't find him going to get all the material things that he could afford, nor him trying to make a name for himself in a, in a gear of fame of trying to gain the affection and attention of others as soon people are going to mock and spit on him. We don't find him trying to get in, I don't know, one more accomplished, uh, nice sermon in at the synagogue or the temple. <laughs> uh, but what we do find is he focused upon loving God and loving others. As he heals people, he brings encouragement, he cares, he lifts people up who even feel like an outcast, such as Zacchaeus, all along the way to Jerusalem. And being ready to leave, the aim isn't to get mine, to get provision and popularity and power and worry and stress about it. No, 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 that, that's the world's deception and what it says equates to being free. And living, and, and it's far from restful and peaceful. But the aim is to, to give love and give life away. To, to, to attempt to make sure that others know and they sense the love of God. When you're ready to leave, others, people, are important. Amen. As you, as, you, as you seek for others to be uplifted and you want them to be empowered, to sense and know the hand of the Lord and his love in their life. There's an anonymous quote that shares, at the end of life, what really matters is not what we bought, but what we built. Amen. Not what we got, but what we shared. Mm -hmm. Not our competence, but our character. And not our success, but our significance. Live a life of love. As, as time drew uh, even closer, the week in which Jesus would fulfill that purpose, where he'd go into Jerusalem for Passover week, and he'd, he'd, it was the evening Right before he was arrested and he would, he would go to the cross, he made arrangements to have a Passover meal with his disciples in, in this very intimate setting. And, and, and as they eat dinner together, 
Jesus gets up from the table, according to John 13, and he girds himself with a towel, and he goes around doing the duty of a servant in that culture, washing his disciples' feet, including Judas Iscariot, who would betray him. And he tells them, love one another as I have loved you. And he wanted them to be filled with his love, his influence so much that at a portion of the supper, he takes a portion of the Passover meal, that of bread and wine, and he tells me, he says, this is my body, which is for you, take it. And he takes the cup, and he says, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Take and drink. And then he tells me, he says, where I'm going, you cannot come. He, he wanted them to be to be filled with him. He says, where I'm going, you cannot come, but where I go, I go to prepare a place for you. Amen. In my father's house, there are many rooms. I wouldn't tell you, I wouldn't tell you that if that wasn't true. And I'm gonna go and prepare a place. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna get you. Amen. In the meantime, though, I'm gonna send my Holy Spirit so you can always sense and know that I'm with you, that you're always loved. And and I've got you. When when we're ready to, to leave, you take time to pour into those that are close to you. You serve them, you share life bringing words, you, you invest in them, and you, you leave an impact. And the greatest, the pinnacle, the hallmark of God's love, love's completed work, its clear picture happens at the cross. Doing for humanity what we couldn't do for ourselves, and Jesus pours all of his love out into them like this knowing, knowing that they would scatter. One would betray him, another denies him, and others scatter. When you're ready to leave, wrongdoings and grudges aren't held on to. Mm -hmm. No, that's, that, that's what the world says brings freedom and how to live. But, but freedom in the Lord, and real freedom, you forgive. You let bitterness go aside because you long for home. And, and with the Lord, it gets into your bones. And hurt is overridden with God's love. And you can't help to even want your offenders to know you're loved. And on Friday afternoon, the drawing away from this world for freedom in Christ, all of it was fully realized for Sister Wanda. As Christ came to provide a hand. And she, she, she looked at love, the epitome of love, square in the eye. The one she'd been drawn and affected by so much throughout her life. 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter, the 12th verse shares, for, for now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Amen. Now I know in part then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. In Christ Jesus, friends, that there is indeed a drawing away from what matters in this world towards what matters for eternity. And, 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 and this love in him continues to grow, and, and we sense it here partly as we go throughout life, but with him in heaven fully, because there are no tears, no pain, no suffering. I can't imagine Wanda not being able to see for such a long time that she wasn't able to, finally being able to see, but even more so, the very first thing she looks into Amen. is the loving eyes of her Lord and Savior. And now we come back full circle to you and I. There's challenge in times like this. Are we ready to leave? As we continue to age and we're here by the grace of God living on earth and freedom looks different, mm -hmm. are we ready to leave? Well, until I'm ready to leave, I don't know how much I'm really living. Solomon sort of writes that at the beginning of Ecclesiastes 12. He says, remember also your creator in the days of your youth. And I know some of us may laugh at before the evil days come and the years draw near, of which you will say, I have no pleasure in them. 
1 John 5, 12 reports, whoever has a son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. Mm -hmm. Being ready to leave tends to paint what really matters and what true freedom looks like. In that picture, it's not about getting more material possessions or, or accolades or things of the world. It's not even to be liked by everyone. It's not to be in the spotlight nor accomplishing something, getting one more hour in at the job per se, but it is absolutely honed in on loving God and loving others. Amen. And, and to not wait until it's too late. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. Love God and love others. Do, 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 do that while you still can. And you have vitality. So who do you need to give life in Christ and love away towards today? Who could you pour life and love into through Christ Jesus and invest in today? Who is it around you that needs a sense of uh, a touch from, from God in a way. And in this state, when, when it's, it's your time, when it's our time, and we transition with the Lord, we go home with Him, and all of His love is as beautiful and lovely as these flowers and cards and whatnot are, are, it will not mean much to us as we will be gone on to be with the Lord. And which is why it's so important to do these things now while we still can. Not someday. Someday I'll take my family on that vacation that I know I've been planning for years and it'd be good for us. Someday I'll have that conversation with that one to patch things up and make things right. Someday I'll get involved with Jesus and his work of spreading his love in the world, sharing his kingdom. I'll tell you, sometimes I think someday is the devil's favorite word. Mm -hmm. And it keeps us bound from living in, in the freedom of Christ. And we don't have to wait until someday. We, we can do it today. Amen. So what phone calls need to be made? Mm -hmm. Who do you need to meet with? Who comes to mind when you ask yourself, am I ready to leave? Because your life and mine won't always be like it is today. And as our lives are being drawn away from this world, we have a window of opportunity right now to get ready to leave. I, th I thank our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our servant, Wanda. And I'm, I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to seeing her in the fullness of God's love someday. That's a good way to use it. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you and we praise you for who you are. You are indeed the life giver, the, the epitome of love, and, 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 and that you share that with us through your son, Jesus Christ. It is amazing. And we, we, we thank you for your servant, Wanda, who, who left a trail of what it looks like to be ready to leave and therefore really live. live. As she's enjoying the splendor and glory of being in your presence, experiencing your love to the full, we remain here. We celebrate her life, and at the same time, we miss her. We thank you for the wonderful memories. We know your life and love has not left us, but you are, you are here by your spirit comforting us, and, and we too can, can, can really live loving you, loving others, and your good grace and mercy and care as we live less entangled by the world and mourn your freedom, giving life and love away, doing what's important. As you care more about our lives than we do, I pray your healing to the void we feel right now. Fill us with your loving presence. It is in Christ's name we pray. Uh, Wanda is more alive right now than she's ever been. Amen. And probably and more alive. I would I would suggest to you more alive than anybody in this room right now. And so I think it's fitting that we end with the song, one of my favorites, if not my favorite hymn, "Amazing Grace," because it's all because of God's grace that it's possible. Amen. 
what she's experiencing now, we have the hope of experiencing that day because of his amazing grace. Let's sing that together, number 127. <laughs> Peace.